A couple years back, I made a video ranking the finale of each Mario & Luigi game, and while that video is rough around the edges, I had fun making it. Recently though, one of my friends suggested that I make a similar ranking video, but for the mainline Mario finales, and I thought it was a great idea. So here we are where I'm about to do just that. Now a list like this may sound simple, but it was actually a bit more difficult to narrow down than you might think. For instance, some of you may recall that I asked whether or not certain games counted as mainline Mario games, namely The Lost Levels, Super Mario Land 1 and 2, and Bowser's Fury, and the universal response seemed to be that the first three were, with Bowser's Fury being debatable. So for the sake of being thorough and keeping the ranking a lovely round 20, I'm including all four of those games. Of course, the rest of the games some might consider to be mainline won't be included due to either being remakes of pre-existing games or part of a different sub-series of Mario. This includes, but is not limited to, Yoshi's Island despite the Super Mario World subtitle, Wario Land despite the Super Mario Land 3 subtitle, Super Mario All-Stars, Hotel Mario, Mario is Missing, all the Mario Advance games, and the Luigi's Mansion trilogy for good measure. Now in terms of how we'll be ranking each finale, it'll boil it down to three categories. Number one, the final level. A final level needs to be challenging, especially in comparison to most of the game, and depending on said difficulty being overboard or lackluster, it will play a part in where they're ranked. It should also have an aura of finality to it to further hammer home the feeling of ending the game. Also, I'm only taking the final level into account, not the entire final world, that's too much to go over. Number two, the final boss. Similarly, does the final boss succeed in giving you one last challenge to end the game? Does it test your skills in the best way it can, or is it Bowser in a hot tub? Extra points will be handed to music and atmosphere if they're good enough. Number three, the ending. You obviously want to end the game on a high note to make the player feel good about the journey they just went on. If you end up with a generally unsatisfying ending, it can either be the cherry on top of a shit sundae, or leave a sour aftertaste after a really good final level and boss. Side note to all the Paper Mario fans in my audience, I'm sorry I haven't given you guys any love yet, and I promise that I'll give it to you sometime next year. Heck, the Thousand Year Door remake comes out next year, so it'll be the perfect time. Alright, with all that said and done, we have our entries and our requirements. Let's go! Usually when it comes to Mario Final Bosses, there are three major culprits that are considered to be the worst. Each one is bad in their own ways, and every side of the fanbase has their own reasons for picking one of them as the worst. However, for this specific list, we don't count just the final boss, we count the whole final level and ending along with it. So with that extra baggage, we gotta view these three in different contexts, and out of all of them, Sunshine easily has it the worst. For starters, we got the final level Corona Mountain, which is fittingly named given how sickening it is. We got platforms that are rather far apart from each other, basically demanding perfect jumps, not to mention some of them have spikes or are covered in flames that can only be put out temporarily. We got the boat, which has some of the most awkward controls known to man that weren't fixed in 3D All-Stars, and we got the clouds leading to the final boss, which aren't too bad compared to the previous stuff. Difficulty aside, Corona Mountain just doesn't feel like a final level. It's just a generic lava cave with boring music and little to no atmosphere. The only part of it that resembles a final level is the difficulty, and they just go too far with it. Meanwhile, the final boss is just pathetic. For one, it's Bowser in a hot tub. I know Sunshine had a vacation theme, but how am I supposed to take this seriously? It looks stupid, and the voice acting makes it even more stupid. Mario! How dare you disturb my family vacation? <laughs> But what about the actual fight? Well, Bowser breathes fire and Junior fires missiles. That's it. They only have one attack each and avoiding him is as easy as running away. To beat them, you just rocket jump and ground pound the points of the arena and hope and pray you don't accidentally fall between the cracks of the pieces, which if you know Sunshine is way too easy to do. Oh yeah, the water quote unquote from the hot tub can also hurt you as it spills out. Not that it really matters considering the actual attacks aren't going to hit you anytime soon. And once you go through all that, you fall back down to earth, your jetpack flood dies only to be repaired later, meaning there was no point to having the thing die at all, the Fiantas celebrate the return of the Shine Sprites, and Bowser and Junior have a little exchange before the game ends. Honestly, this finale feels like it was slapped together out of obligation rather than passion. It has all the basic requirements to end a game, yet none of them have any notable elements to them. Like, I can't even muster up the energy to get mad at this because it's just a load of nothing all around. Between overdone difficulty, non-existent difficulty, a boring as hell ending, and a general feeling of apathy, this is the lowest the mainline Mario games have sunk bar none. 
I guess the one slightly redeemable aspect is the laughably bad voice acting, but is that really the bar we want to be striving for? Are a couple of unintentionally funny lines worthy of even half a point for this hollow volcano? Maybe you'll get more out of this if you're a kid who's not very good at games, but personally, even though Sunshine was a fairly decent game up until this point, I could go the rest of my life without ever touching this again. I mean, what the f do you want me to say? Gee, this sure is the last level. We got a shooting sequence that was introduced only once prior in this incredibly short game. It's kind of difficult, even though the game itself is not. Wow, they sure did fake us out with an incredibly easy boss. Now instead, we got a slightly harder final boss with half-decent music. Is it any wonder that he was just a normal boss in the sequel? Oh goody, Mario saved Princess Daisy and they get one interaction that's no different from all the other times Peach was saved before flying off in a rocket. Have I mentioned yet that this was Daisy's first and only appearance in a mainline Mario game before Super Mario Bros. Wonder? Way to make your new character stand out, Nintendo! I guess the only reason that it's a spot higher than Corona Mountain is because the standards are a lot lower in one of the first ever Game Boy games than they are in Sunshine. So congrats, Super Mario Land. You get a very slight pass. whoop de doo Oh joy, the Lost Levels. Everyone's favorite Mario game. Yup, and its final level sure is hell just like the rest of the game. It sure is a maze that you're guaranteed to get lost in if you don't figure out the right way in time. There sure is this one aggravatingly difficult jump that'll end in death more times than not. Oh, and there's a blue Bowser here too. Why don't we ever talk about this guy? Like what even is he? It's not Bowser teleporting because this Bowser is blue. So is this a clone or is it his twin brother that was never mentioned again? Why am I focusing so much on blue Bowser of all characters? Because the rest of this finale is just nothing. By the time you reach this point in the game, you're likely numb to all the batshit insanity Lost Level throws at you, so what you're left with is the standard Bowser Bridge boss that's no different than the seven other times you fought him in this game, let alone the other eight times you likely did in Super Mario Bros, and the ending which is the typical Thank You Mario ending. Between this and Super Mario Land, I could swap between them and get the exact same experience. And once again, the only reason it's higher is because of lower standards, believe it or not. Congrats, Lost Levels, you also get a very slight pass. Yay! Might as well tell you all now, you're going to be seeing most of the 2D games bunched together for a good chunk of this video. And next up on the chopping block is good old New Super Mario Bros. 2. I'm of course being sarcastic as very few people I know like this game, and its finale is no different. To give it some credit, the final level isn't the worst thing ever, rather it's just kind of bland. I'm not just talking about it being another Bowser's castle, the general layout is just the basic stuff for a final level, and the only interesting part comes in the latter half where the Koopalings attempt to screen nuke you, forcing you to hide behind cover for a second. That part can make things more interesting, but it's not enough to save this level. Also, this is just a me thing, but the music in this level is kind of weird. New Super Mario Bros. 2 already increases the amount of boss that are normally heard in the New Super Mario Bros. game soundtracks, and putting them in the music for this level kind of waters down the dramatic atmosphere in my opinion. But where the finale gets really bad is the final boss. For starters, we have the boring overused bridge boss, and even though Bowser chucks hammers in this part, they're way too easy to avoid, making their inclusion little more than a cute throwback. Then the Koopalings use their magic to make Bowser giant, and the real fight begins. Right away, the problems pop up. The only thing you can do here is jump on the rising platforms, and Bowser's only means of attacking is swiping wherever you are incredibly slowly. In fact, it's so slow that you will never get hit even if you're trying a little bit in this fight. There are a couple of sections where Bowser does breathe fire at you, as well as a couple statues along the way that shoot fireballs, but neither of those matter since they're so slow and obvious. Much like the claw swipes, you will likely never get hit unless you want to, making for an absolute joke of a fight. 
But by far the most offensive thing about this fight is the fact that it rips so much from New Super Mario Bros. Wii. Spoilers for later in the list, but New Super Mario Bros. Wii has a pretty awesome final boss. New Super Mario Bros. 2, on the other hand, pretty much looked at its older brother and decided it wanted to replicate that, but infinitely worse. From Bowser growing big to the fight being more of an obstacle course to the method of winning being hitting the button at the end, this is basically the bootleg version of New Super Mario Bros. Wii's final boss. Hell, they even had the gall to reuse the music from that fight. Yeah, that music's amazing, but it just further proves how unoriginal and pathetic this fight is. And I get it, the 3DS isn't as capable as the Wii. They can't really replicate the same scale and grandeur as the Wii did. But don't try to do that then! Come up with something original that the 3DS is capable of, instead of just leeching off the success of your superior predecessor. Oh, but who am I kidding? Asking New Super Mario Bros. 2 to do something original when its whole selling point is money is an impossible task in and of itself. I haven't even gotten into the ending yet, but, like, what the f*** do you want me to say? Mario gets Peach out of her cage. He carries her home while collecting a bunch of coins. This is pitifully simple by Super Mario World standards, but by the standards of the new Super Mario Bros. games, this is borderline embarrassing. Even though there are three other finales worse than this, I'd say this is the one I hate the most out of all of them. And if it weren't for the level being passable, I would have gladly sent it to the bottom. But no, they put in the bare minimum effort needed for the final level, forcing me to put it forth to last instead. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> oh goody, Super Mario Bros. 2 is here with another forgettable finale for us to witness. The level is fine. It does its job as mediocrely as it can with a bunch of conveyor belts, chains, and the bajillion Birdo fight we've had in this game. The door of the final boss attacks you at the end, so I guess that's kinda cool. Oh yeah, the final boss is King Wart. He has one attack where he spits bubbles, and you kill him by force feeding him vegetables. I'm not making any of this up. Afterwards, Mario or whoever else you're playing as frees these fairies from a jar? Apparently that was the goal of this game the whole time? No wait actually, because the game we were playing this whole time was nothing but a dream. Isn't that the most satisfying ending ever? I feel like I'm losing brain cells just talking about this, let's just move on. Alright, it's about time the original Super Mario Bros showed up, and its finale is once again whatever. Well, it was the first one, so I gotta cut it a little more slack than the others. Honestly, it's basically a less infuriating version of Lost Levels finale. It's a bit more of a maze, meaning you will most likely get lost unless you know the right path to take, but it's still nothing special at all. Bowser's at the end with his bridge and hammers being the most not-threatening villain ever, and we got the typical thank you Mario ending. Again, it was the first of its kind, meaning I have to be a little more lenient with it, but being the first of many boring finales doesn't change the fact that it's boring. What else is there to say, really? This is yet another example of being the first, not making you the best. You know, I get the feeling that most people are gonna walk away from this video thinking that I hate the 2D Mario games. So to shoot that down real quick, I actually like a lot of the 2D Mario games. With the exception of New Super Mario Bros. 2, they're all at least decent to me, and I do enjoy them from time to time. I just dislike a lot of their finales, to the point where they ended up being bunched together like this. And next up on that list is Super Mario Land 2. Though to be absolutely fair, this is where things start getting good. The final level at Wario's Castle is surprisingly tough compared to the rest of the game. It's got tricky platforming, a bunch of hazards, and a few enemies towards the end. Honestly, a fairly solid final level if I do say so myself. Then there's the final boss against Wario. Yeah, Wario was in a mainline Mario game as the villain, and hasn't been seen since. Now in the Mario fandom, this final boss is actually regarded as one of the best ones out there. And speaking personally, eh, he's fine. The fight's as simple as jumping on Wario's head three times while he runs around attempting to squash you. Granted, he does use the power-ups you use throughout the game, but this is a game with only two power-ups. They may shake up the fight a bit, but the solution is as simple as before. Honestly, it feels like fans are more invested in the potential of Wario's fights rather than the fight itself. Maybe if the land games were to get remade in the future, we could see this fight fully realized, but right now, Wario's only run as the bad guy thus far gets a C plus from me. Oh yeah, the ending. Uh, Wario gets kicked out, and Mario gets his castle back. Yeah, that's the ending. 
Are you not satisfied? I said this where it starts getting good, not that it gets good immediately. Continuing the steady increase in quality, we got the first new Super Mario Bros. If Wario's Castle in Super Mario Land 2 was solid, Bowser's Castle is pretty damn good. It's a good length, it's got a gimmick where everything turns upside down, the obstacles are weirdly better laid out than its younger brother, and they brought back the maze aspect from Super Mario Bros. and the lost levels. Only this time, it's nowhere near as confusing thanks to environmental hints. Whereas in the prior games, you just had to continuously go until you happen to guess the correct path. It may be another Bowser's Castle, but it does something new and does it well, which is commendable. But then they just had to blow it with the final boss. <laughs> okay, maybe blow it is a bit extreme. The final boss isn't terrible or even that bad, but it is extremely lacking. It's Bowser and Bowser Jr. teaming up to fight you. Only issue is that Bowser Jr. is no different than the 10 times you fought him before, and you just gotta get past Bowser by running under him when he jumps and hitting the switch. Even if you don't have a Fire Flower, these two really aren't a threat, and the only notable thing that happens is that Bowser spews out more fire when Junior gets taken out. Neat daddy is angry moment, I guess. As for the ending, Peach is free and gives Mario a kiss on the cheek, there's a mildly funny post credit scene of Junior dragging Bowser somewhere, and that's it. You don't even get to see Mario and Peach go home, it just ends. It's slightly better than New Super Mario Bros. 2's ending since Mario gets a kiss at least, but the bare minimum ain't gonna get you much farther. Alright, are we finally done with the 2D games yet? No? There's another one? Ugh, which one is it? Oh! Okay, this is sure to be a game changer, right? Well, it's certainly a step up from the rest. By the standards of Super Mario Bros. 3, the final level is decently challenging. Obviously, there's better in the remaining games, but for the time, it does a decent job of challenging the player with plenty of hazards and a big platforming sequence. The final boss, meanwhile, is not a bridge boss for once. Bowser will breathe fireballs and attempt to crush you, and every time he does, a layer of the ground below him will break, so you just gotta get him to break through the ground enough that he falls to his doom. It's not hard by any means, but it's something unique, which I respect. The ending's still the typical thank you Mario ending, but they do poke fun at the old your princess is in another castle line, which is cute. Man, it's good to finally feel something other than complete apathy. Let's keep the ball rolling. This next entry might cause a bit of confusion from a few Mario fans, but I do this sort of thing almost every day, so I'm just gonna go ahead and say it. Super Mario Galaxy 2 has a good finale. Now that I properly angered a lot of the people who hate Galaxy 2, I guess I should explain myself. Starting with the level, it's really well designed. There are sections for almost every power-up in the game, even for Yoshi, and there are moments towards the end where it gets especially hard. It's also a good length, so it doesn't overstay its welcome. I also like that the background is a giant Bowser's throne room. It fits with Bowser being giant in this game. Then we got the final boss. At first, it seems like another version of the first two fights against Bowser. Bowser punches the planet you're on to create shockwaves, breathes fire, and rains down meteors. And to beat him, you just gotta ground pound the meteors back at him when he punches the planet. Simple stuff all around, but doesn't seem worthy of being the final boss. Until he gets back up after being beaten to continue fighting. This time, he makes his way towards you to punch you, and you just gotta ground pound the meteors at him to stop him. This is the main reason people will likely get mad at me for placing Galaxy 2 this high. A ton of people criticize this part for being way too easy. And while I do agree that it is really easy, I also don't hate it. Look, no matter how many times people like Josh Scorcher love to hate this fight, I can't really bring myself to truly hate it. The visuals are cool and the music is amazing. If the fight had just been longer and, I don't know, Bowser got faster every time you hit him, maybe things would be different. It's such a shame too because the ending is actually really good this time around. Peach and Mario reunite, Rosalina shows up to collect her lost Luma, Mario loses his hat in the process, but at the end gets a ginormous cake from Peach. It's a really good ending for a really good game. I just wish the final boss was just a little better, but it is what it is. I'm probably the only person who would put this finale this close to the top 10, and to be honest, I'm proud of that. Oh. Oh. 
at last, the top 10. From here on out, it's nothing but good finales all around. And first up is the first 3D Mario game. Now then, how does good old 64 do the first ever 3D final level? Honestly, pretty good. Even though 64 is a fairly slippery game, everything is cleanly laid out with that in mind. Most of the enemy types are here, and all the challenges before you are fair if you're good at the game, which you probably are if you made it this far. Now for the final boss. Much like the previous Bowser fights, beating him is as simple as swinging Bowser around by the tail and throwing him into a mine. Only this time, you gotta throw him into three mines, with the arena crumbling into a star shape on the second go. Bowser's attacks consist of fireballs, be they in small bursts or fiery torrents, occasional running, and some shockwaves as well. A pretty simple fight all around, but it works well for the game at hand. Plus, the music is pretty decent. Not my favorite, but iconic nonetheless. Also, to the five people who are asking about the DS Remake's take on this finale, literally all of it is the same. The only difference, if you can even call it that, is that Bowser isn't rainbow colored in the remake, which is apparently enough to get on some people's nerves, but that's whatever to me. Bowser always looked dumb in the original to me anyway, it's not like a rainbow filter is an improvement. Lastly, we got the ending, where the stars are restored and Peach is free from her painting. She gives Mario a kiss on the nose, as well as a cake for thanks. Yeah, I think you've noticed the pattern with most Mario endings. I guess the only noteworthy thing here is that Peach's voice is genuinely atrocious, though that could be a symptom of me being used to the normal Peach voice for so many years. Obviously, if you're looking at this finale from a modern perspective, it's pretty dated, but as a product of its time, it does its job well. In fact, if this was just a top 10 list, I can't think of a better number 10 entry. Being the first doesn't make you the best, but it doesn't stop you from being good. <laughs> Oh joy, another new Super Mario Bros. game. Please tell me this one will be at least decent. Okay, we got ourselves a good one this time. Though I can't really say that about the level. It's not bad, it's just kind of barren. Like, if it weren't for Bowser Jr. coming in to crush you, this would be an almost flat stretch with some mild platforming. Not to mention, even with Bowser Jr. here, the level doesn't get anywhere above decent since he's pretty easy to avoid. It is kind of neat that it's a corrupted Peach's castle, but considering Bowser's inside story did it way better and this take doesn't feel that much different than a normal Bowser's castle, it hardly matters. Of course, after that, we got the introductory Bowser Bridge boss that's in every new Super Mario Bros. game. This one doesn't even throw hammers, meaning new Super Mario Bros. 2 does one very small yet ultimately insignificant thing better than the others. But of course, Bowser Jr. and Kamek swoop in to use their magic to strengthen Bowser. Great, I guess now it's time for the obligatory giant Bowser chase. Okay, now we're talking. I know judging by how I've been acting towards this finale, you guys are probably wondering why I put it this high, and to be frank, this is the sole reason. This fight is the team of Bowser and Junior dessert. With Bowser as massive as he is and Junior flying above, the only way to win is to commandeer the clown car as it comes down and use it to smack Bowser on the head. Before you can, however, Bowser will breathe fireballs while Junior throws down the bombs and attempts to crush you. And even after you hit Bowser, he'll spin around the whole arena to hit you and then rain down fire from the sky! I'm glad this ended up being the last new Super Mario Bros. game because this is the perfect final boss to go out on. It's not the most complicated thing ever, but it's still just plain awesome. Of course, the ending is once again the typical thank you Mario ending, though this one shows Mario being a bit more of a simp than usual, but it has the added bonus of seeing Bowser, Jr., and the Koopalings flee in the most laughably pathetic way possible. That always gets me a smile. Yeah, New Super Mario Bros. U, and by extension the deluxe port, might be one of the most generic Mario games of the bunch, but I think they managed to pull it together for the end. Granted, that mostly barren level prohibits me from placing it any higher, but that final boss alone at least gets it into the top 10, and it's even slightly above 64. Finally, one of the classic Mario games has a finale that's not just decent. And fittingly, it was the last major 2D Mario game for 16 years, unless you count Super Mario Land 2. Also, before we get into this properly, I just want to say that before being able to experience this myself on NSO, I tried to create a new restore point, but accidentally hit load restore point, which sent me all the way back to World 5. 
I was very angry then. Regardless of that, we got ourselves a pretty good final level. This one might be the most replayable one to date with 8 possible rooms to enter, but only being able to experience 2, meaning you could try a new combination of rooms every time. Said rooms have their own unique hazards to overcome, and there's no overlap between them. None of them are all that hard, but by the standards of old 2D Mario, a couple of them might get your fingers working. As for the final boss, we got ourselves another unique one, and it's quite iconic amongst fans. There are three phases to this fight, and using his giant clown car, Bowser will fly around in phase 1, drop giant balls in phase 2, bounce around in phase 3, rain down fire between phases, and throw down Mecha Koopas in all three phases. To win, you just need to jump on and pick up the Mecha Koopas and throw them back at Bowser three times per phase. And yes, this does require proper timing as Bowser is pretty quick. Peach will even throw down Super Mushrooms at the start of phases 2 and 3. I guess the princess isn't entirely useless this time around. As usual, this all sounds like simple stuff, but in action, all these elements make for a really good final boss. I had to agree with everyone on this one, it deserves its status as one of the best Mario final bosses. The ending meanwhile is, what else, the thank you Mario ending, but at least the credits have a neat visual of Peach riding on Yoshi back home. Also, I think everyone's overlooking the fact that this is the only time in the history of the franchise that Peach kisses Mario on the mouth. No seriously, look at this sprite, you can't is going for the cheek, that's straight up mouth to mouth right there. All in all, despite not growing up with this game, I can safely say that this finale is indeed one of the greats. The ending is of course still nothing to write home about, but that's to be expected from the older and even the newer games to some extent. Glad to see the last sprite based Mario game go out on a high note, even if there are plenty of other finales that are much better. Disappointing to see Super Mario Bros. Wonder not be as high as you thought it'd be? Well, it's in the top 10 at the very least. I think the main reason comes down to a certain part of the level. Now, it's fine to see Junior pop up again to try to pull off another Wonder Power, only for it to hilariously backfire, and it makes sense for the final level to consist of every single Wonder Flower sequence you've experienced in this game. But my main issue is that all of it is an auto-scroller. Normally, I'm indifferent to auto-scrollers, but something about this one in particular just feels off. Granted, certain Wonder Flower sequences were auto-scrollers, but when you're up against all of them, it just kind of lessens them in my opinion. Luckily, we got the best and only unique boss in the game. Bowser's throwing a concert and the main song's all about how he's gonna beat you. We got another three-phase fight on our hands and Bowser's attacks consist of slamming his hands down, shooting fiery music note piranha plants, some of which burst into smaller versions on impacts, and some spiky ice balls to boot. In between phases, he'll also send a barrage of the piranha plants your way in musical formation. You can take out the hands by boost jumping in time with the beats, but to really beat Bowser, you gotta hit the button on him when it's vulnerable as sometimes he'll cover it with his hand. What's more, the areas where you can boost jump get smaller and smaller with each phase. This fight's a lot tougher than one might expect, and honestly, it's a nice change of pace compared to the usual difficulty Mario fights presents. Plus at the end, you gotta scale some platforms to hit the button one last time in wonderful fashion, which needless to say is really cool. The ending's still not amazing though, we got all the characters celebrating for a bit, and there's a post credit scene of Kamek failing to escort Bowser and Junior to safety, which isn't really as funny since the Kooplings aren't here. Overall, the finale is good despite some grievances. I love the concert aesthetic and the abnormally difficult final boss, but a couple small things make me place it here. Still not bad by any means, but it's just shy of greatness. Ha, <laughs> uh, new Super Mario Bros. Wii, the best new Super Mario Bros. game. And of course, it's got the best finale out of all of them. Let's start with the level. Previously, we had a generic level with a flashbang sequence, a somewhat trippy level, and a pretty barren level with Junior slapped onto it. This time, the gimmick is platforms that fall when you land on them. At first, it's as simple as quickly jumping to the next one you see, but the second half of the level is more strategic than that. With slowly lowering lava, you gotta stay on the platforms for as long as you can before jumping to the next to avoid running out of platforms and making sure you don't touch the lava. It's a simple yet effective gimmick for our final level. Of course, we have yet another Bowser Bridge boss after that. It's as simple as ever, and once he falls, we rescue the prince and... Never mind, Kamek's pulling a fast one on us. Now he's supercharging Bowser with his magic. I wonder what's going to happen. <laughs> Yep, Bowser's giant once again, but this time it's very different. Other times when Bowser was giant, we had ways of fighting back, and he wasn't so big that we couldn't win. But here, Bowser's too big. We can't fight back, so we can only run. 
As Bowser tears apart his own castle with his claws and fireballs, you gotta do your best to evade the attacks and avoid falling to your death as you desperately try to reach the button that will drain the lava and stop Bowser. Best be sure to grab the propeller mushroom too, cause you'll need it. And remember how I said that New Super Mario Bros. 2 stole the music for this fight? Well, it must have been pretty jealous, and for good reason. The track conveys the perfect mixture of intensity, majesty, and pure terror as the titanic turtle closes in with no mercy. And it only elevates further when the choir comes in. After that adrenaline rush, Peach is free from her cage in an eerily similar manner to New Super Mario Bros. 2. Did that game steal everything from New Super Mario Bros. Wii? Luigi and the Toad show up with balloons to carry everyone home. Mario and Peach get some time to themselves while leaving Luigi behind, but luckily the Toads have his back. Oh, and after the credits, the Kooplings are seen helping Bowser get off his back, only for the whole f castle to crash down on him. That's hilarious. As you can see, this finale basically does everything it needs to correctly, and the only reason it evades the top 5 is purely out of preference if I'm being honest. Either way, this is where 2D Mario peaked with its finales, and now it's time for 3D Mario to strut its stuff. Okay, so judging the finale of Bowser's Fury is a bit tough to do for one major reason. It doesn't really have a final level. The whole nature of Bowser's Fury is that it's an open level akin to Odyssey, meaning the whole map is technically one big level, and I can't exactly go over the whole thing as that would take too long. It does have specific areas of the map that technically would qualify as levels, but you access the would-be final level long before the final boss fight. So what do I do? Well, I've ultimately decided that the final sequence with Fury Bowser will technically count as our final level. And if you have a problem with that, look, I'm doing my best here. It was either this or Bowser's Fury wouldn't make it on the list at all. So just be quiet and eat your sandwich, okay? Anyways, for a bit of context, as you explore this open level, Bowser, now hopped up on black magical paints, will emerge for a bit to bring hell to earth, along with some accompanying rock music. And the only way to get him to go away is to either wait until he calms down or collect one of the many shinies later throughout the map. However, once you get enough shinies, Bowser will awaken and stay awakened. No amount of shiny collecting will be enough to make him back down, so you gotta traverse the map collecting the last remaining shinies you need with him always hanging over your head. And once you have enough, you can use the Giga Bell to basically become Super Saiyan Lion Mario for a big kaiju battle. Normally this would be seen as an awesome mano a mano moment, but this is the fifth time you've fought him. Throughout the rest of the game, you've beaten him down four other times to unlock more sections of the map. And by now, the novelty's kind of worn thin. Bowser does have new attacks by this point, but it hardly makes a difference. It's still a cool kaiju fight at the end of the day, but I just wish it wasn't the fifth cool kaiju fight. But lucky for us, Bowser ain't done just yet. Still utterly enraged, he takes the gigabells from you, and you gotta ride Plessy the Sea Monster to chase after him and smack the orb holding the bells back into him. As you ride, Bowser will be raining down flaming spikes and breathing his signature fire to try to take you down. And with the rocket music and the scarlet sky, the fight is all the more intense. Despite that, it also ends hilariously with Mario and Plessy getting the Gigabells and flattening Bowser in glorious fashion. Now obviously this phase of the fight is awesome, but it shouldn't be enough to get the finale this high, right? You would think so, but even more lucky for us, if you collect all 100 shinies, Bowser gains not only this cool Ultra Instinct colored hair, but also a harder version of both fights. The Plessy Chase sequence has the usual faster fire breath and way more spikes, but the Kaiju fight easily got the better treatment. Bowser's way faster with his variety of attacks, and he's way tankier, making for a longer fight. These simple additions make a normally cool worn down fight into a proper battle of titans on a battlefield of islands. Lastly, the ending is pretty funny. Despite helping Bowser out of his predicament, he still lashes out at Mario because he will always hate him, but Bowser Jr. is able to get him to back off before immediately teasing Mario for no reason. Once a brat, always a brat, I guess. 
The lack of a real final level does hurt this finale a bit, but considering how unique and awesome the final boss is, it more than makes up for it. Would it be higher if it had a final level? Maybe, but it's better than having a bad final level. That could have placed it even lower on the list. Well, 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 3D Land, the thought experiment of what happens when Bare Bones 2D becomes Bare Bones 3D. You're lucky your finale goes as hard as it does, though. Getting straight into it, the final level is actually a ride through Bowser's Castle this time. As the cart goes through, you'll have to duck and dodge between flame pillars, fireballs, and other various obstacles. And if you're going for the coins, it could be extra tough. Even then, I'm surprised that this level is hard as it is, considering 3D Land as a whole isn't really known for being difficult, and the level's got a pretty good atmosphere too that becomes even better once you shoot yourself to the tallest tower and the rain pours down as you ascend. Once you're inside, Bowser jumps in to halt you from saving your princess, but ends up accidentally breaking the floor, causing both of you to tumble down to the lower levels. Then the fight begins. As the castle crumbles around you, Bowser will be jumping from point to point, breathing his fireballs at you and the already unstable platforms you're jumping on. At one point, he'll even throw barrels at you as an homage to Donkey Kong. Naturally, you aren't able to fight back against Bowser right now. You can only run and jump as you avoid Bowser's onslaught and make it to the button that sends him plummeting to his doom. Psych! Bowser jumps back up and shoots his now white fireballs even faster than before. The platforming quickly becomes way more difficult as Bowser takes down more and more platforms, and at the end it's one mad dash to the last button with Bowser in hot pursuit before finally falling back down for real this time. This is how you do a bridge boss. No tedious and boring get past Bowser and win stuff. Make him a threat that will not let you pass on his watch, and make it feel rewarding when you do get past him. The ending, meanwhile, is rather wholesome. Mario and Peach dance together for a bit before Mario flies her home as the credits roll. Also, Bowser shows up on a tower of Goombas to try to get Peach back, only to quickly fall yet again. Man, Bowser falls a lot in this game. For a game like 3D Land, where it's basically every generic 2D Mario trope stretched into 3D, a finale this great is nothing less than surprising, and I'm all for it. From a great final level to an amazing final boss to a simple yet satisfying ending, what more do you really need? The only thing holding this back is ironically the 3DS being a limited system, because the top three are able to do so much more with their greater horsepower. <laughs> It seems the sequel has once again surpassed the original in almost every way, but that can honestly be said for the whole game, not just the finale, but still, let's go into it. I think the final level might be a little worse than 3D Land's final level, but it's still pretty good. You got fireballs raining down from the sky and a big spinning wheel full of big bullies. Plus, at the start, you can see what's left of Bowser's one sweet ride that's now in shambles. The atmosphere is pretty good too, the carnival aesthetic is already pretty good, but it works even better on the way to the skyscraper, especially when the rain starts pouring as you approach. Then once you make it to the tower… For the first time in a Mario game, Bowser can use the power-ups you've used as well, and this is a much better execution than Wario's take on it. This is another example of the final boss being more of an obstacle course than an actual fight, and it's amazing. As you scale the tower, Meowser will claw his way up and down the walls of the tower, and you gotta make sure you're far away from him when he does. The fight may be an auto-scroller, but for once, it's a good auto-scroller. When you make it halfway to the top, Meowser will be spewing fire atop a power block, and you just gotta hit it to get him out of your way. But it ain't done yet! Meowser jumps back up and uses the double cherry to make a bunch of clones of himself, and now it's an even madder dash towards the top. As you jump and platform your way upwards, the clones will continue to claw their way up and down the walls and even break through them to attack you and your only hope of victory is to make it to the top where the real Meowser stands atop the big pow block and hit the block enough times to stop Meowser for good. I haven't even mentioned the music yet. The mixture of triumphant terror of the song is just sublime. It's intense to convey the awesome power Meowser wields, 
but also hopeful enough to give you the motivation to keep climbing and reach the top. Once you win, the Sprixies are finally set free, and Mario and the gang ride the clear pipes home in their new cat suits. The final level may be on the shorter side, but that final boss made up for it tenfold. It gives me so much joy every time I play it, and I'm happy to have it up here in the top three. And yet, there are still two others that are even better. I'm willing to bet that most of you figured that the final spots would come down to these two, Galaxy and Odyssey. These two games are so high quality that you'll find a ton of people not being able to decide which one's better. But for this list, only one can reign supreme with the other in second place. So with that said, the silver medal goes to Odyssey. Did I surprise you? I bet I did. Even though this is my favorite Mario game, I had to admit that the finale is beaten out by another, but that doesn't stop it from being truly awesome in its own right. The level this time is far bigger than any other Mario game. The Moon Kingdom has two major areas, the surface where there's much less gravity, and the core where there's normal gravity. Save for these space octavi, the surface is kinda barren, but it's a visual marvel, especially with Earth in the background. The core, meanwhile, is a gauntlet unlike no other. All of your capture abilities are put to the test in an extremely long test of endurance, and every bit of it is completely fair. It's just up to you to make sure you're good enough to make it through. And it ends with a rematch against Madame Brutal, which is just a longer version of her normal fight, TBH. Once you make it out, though, Mario crashes the wedding in spectacular fashion, and Bowser sends him to the basement to deal with him himself. Even though this is an updated version of Bowser's previous fight, it's still awesome. Bowser will throw his top hat at you, along with several clones of it, and all you gotta do is hit the hat with your hat to take control of it. Once you do, just get close enough to punch Bowser enough times to send him flying. But Bowser will make sure you don't via flaming shockwaves and spike balls. Plus, in between each phase, he busts out his signature fire to roast you to a crisp. The best part, however, is easily the music. The grandeur in each note is simply divine, and there are even snippets of the wedding march in there too. After the final hit, Peach is free from her binds, but the ground breaks, causing you to fall further down into the core. To get out, you take control of Bowser in an escape sequence. With everything crumbling around you, you make a mad dash for the exit, breaking every last rock in your way and jumping to the best of your ability. It's intense as all get out, and we finally get to play as Bowser for the first time in a mainline Mario game. And when you break through the final wall, When did this become a f Sonic game? As the music blares as loud as it can, you gotta break the pillars surrounding you to break the block in the center. And you gotta be quick, cause the ground is crumbling faster than a cracked cookie. Once it's broken, Mario, Peach, and Bowser escape the core and back to the surface. This finale feels so perfect in almost every way, and I would have absolutely loved to put it at the top, but damn it, that ending gets on my nerves! It's cute to see Cappy and his sister reunited, but just as it looks like Mario's finally gonna propose to Peach, and let's face it, this would be the game where that would finally happen, Bowser wakes up and continues his pathetic attempts at marriage. The two bicker for a bit, and Peach rejects both of them. And thus, the dreaded Bowser and Mario ship was born. 
Granted, it does still end happily since Mario does get to leave with Peach while abandoning Bowser on the moon, but come on, the opportunity for perfection was right there! Well, in any case, aside from that, this is the best way you could end a phenomenal game like Super Mario Odyssey. And even though it barely missed the gold, number two is nothing to be ashamed of. Guys, I have a confession to make. Even though Odyssey is my favorite game in the franchise, I knew Galaxy would be the number one from the very start. Odyssey had almost everything right except for that ending, but Galaxy does literally everything right. The final level is the perfect gauntlet to end the game. Just about every gimmick, power-up, and environmental hazard is here and accounted for, and it's all up to you to be the best you can be with every section. Not a piece of it is unfair, and it all just works so well. Even when you get to the final boss, there's still a challenging lead-up with Bowser Jr. firing his cannons at you, and it's just a cherry on top of this amazing level. Then we get the best final boss in Mario history. It's three phases long, with Bowser doing new tricks every time. In phase one, he spews fire and rolls into a ball with only one opening to attack. In phase two, he rolls into a ball with no opening to attack, forcing you to use the balls nearby to hit him. And in phase three, the ante is upped even more with an updated version of the previous fights. It's not too tough all around, but it's intense as all hell. And the music further hammers it home. It just screams Final Boss in a way that Bowser hasn't felt like in a long time. If Bowser's Fury in 3D World felt more like uncontrolled terror and Odyssey felt like an angry groom, Galaxy feels like the conqueror Bowser is. The Koopa King is going all out in a battle that will decide the fate of the whole universe. And it will be his no matter what. And yet, despite all of that, he fails and gets kicked into the sun by Mario. Peach is rescued and it seems like a happy ending. But then Bowser's galaxy explodes into a massive black hole that appears to be destroying everything in its vicinity. The Lumas from the Cosmic Observatory, including the one that's been traveling with you this whole time, use their power to reverse the black hole's effects and create another big bang. The game actually ends with everyone celebrating the freedom of the universe at Peach's castle. Even Bowser gets spared from his initial fate. For a long time, this ending didn't entirely sit right with me for some reason I can't explain. I guess it was because we had to leave Rosalina, and I like Rosalina, but by now, I can acknowledge this as a great ending, and it's something unique, too. As I said before, Galaxy gets everything right. The level, the final boss, the ending, all of it feels perfectly curated to be the ultimate finale that this game deserved, and it remains the peak of mainline Mario to this day even though Odyssey came extremely close. I'm Tony Sonic, and thank you for joining me on not just this video, but all my videos I released this year. I know this year has been a departure from what I'm known for, but I personally feel this is the best course of action for both me and you guys going forward. I'm also really grateful that you guys are stuck around to, for the new E-Ross series. It means a lot and makes all the effort I put in them worth it. Going into 2024, as I promised, I'm going to continue the E-Raw series with debatably the most confusing franchise on planet Earth, but I won't just be blasting through because those games are pretty big and will take a very long time to complete. So the general format for the videos will be an E-Raw, followed by a normal video, and so on and so forth until we're done. And I'm also going to try to upload more to the second channel as I've neglected that for a bit too long, so... Hey, I hope you enjoyed the videos that come out on there as well. Hope you all have a happy new year as well, as in January 2024, my descent into madness begins.